How do you do, folks? Welcome to my channel. I'm coming to you today to ask you for a little help because I've got a puzzle here that someone sent to me and I'm not sure that I know how to answer it. I'm not even sure I know what the puzzle is supposed to get me to do. All I know is it said that there are several manufacturers and they make a mechanical object that's sold in a plain model and in a super deluxe model. Information was to be made available to the purchaser telling what made the higher priced objects more desirable and more expensive than the less expensive object. Well, the expensive model didn't do the job it was designed to do any better than the cheaper model did. And a thief would not consider the expensive one any more desirable than the least expensive if he should happen to break into your house or wherever this object is kept and have a choice between stealing the more expensive or the least expensive model. The puzzle is, what is this object? Well, my guesses relate to the deluxe model uh, so that you can uh, see what it is that made it more expensive than the less expensive object. And uh, your guesses will probably be a whole lot better than mine because I don't feel like mine are particularly good. Since the answer wasn't included, well, my guess is may or may not even have the most remote proximity to what the actual answer to this is supposed to be. Now, I can think of some things that in my own mind, several of them, that might meet the criteria that was outlined above, which, as I said in the beginning, are rather loose. One of the answers might be a TV controller, because they can put all kinds of buttons to press and everything that actually are never used and they don't make it work any better than the basic model where you have an on and an off and a forward and a backward and a pause and a return to the last item. So I guessed the TV controller, I guessed for approximately the same reasons, a modern camera, then I guessed something that might be like a modern watch or another timepiece. And I also guessed that it could be a modern blender. I thought that it could be a Lubeck magnetic indicator, or I thought it could be a can opener. Then I thought that my easy chair might fit that criteria because I have a button I push and it electrically raises the foot rest and it also changes my reclining position but uh, if I'm in a hurry to get up, it's a whole lot slower to get up than if I just had a hand-operated one where I pushed it forward and I could jump up to uh, answer the door if some salesman was trying to uh, sell something as utterly useless as what this automatic control is on my chair, for an example. Well, I thought one of these trash cans would open when you reach over like you're going to put a piece of paper in it. I'm not sure that that's much of an advantage over a trash can you just reach over and drop the piece of paper into. But still, it might would make a deluxe model a whole lot more expensive than the simple model would be. Now my shredder, when I bought it, would automatically turn on when you inserted a sheet of paper. But then that part of it broke and it seems to me like that it's about as easy when I go down to put in that piece of paper if I let my finger stray off course a little bit and press the button that turns it on, where it goes ahead and shreds that piece of paper anyway. But then I got to thinking about a plain hand churn. If you have a plain hand churn, as opposed to one of them with a light that flashes at each stroke and plays Mendelssohn compositions in C major, it looks to me like that plain one would be just about as effective. And so that could be one of the objects that they're talking about. Also, if you bought a foot massager, if you bought one of them that had magnetic waves that are set to resonate at a certain frequency, depending upon the length of your toenails, and also the super deluxe model could even take into consideration the thickness of your toenails, well, I don't know how that would compare as to the simple one that just massaged your feet. Now, if you had a garden hoe that plays Indiana, and I'm unsure if that's, that, that's the correct name, but it contains the words I remember. Through the fields of yellow corn. 
And it's a really beautiful song. My mother's sister, my Aunt Eska, used to whistle that. And she could whistle better than any whistler, far better than any whistler that I've ever heard whistle on radio, TV, or when the old timers get together talking about who the best whittler is. And they also talk sometimes about who the best whistler is. But she'd win it hands down because her whistle doesn't sound just like a whistle. It sounds like the most beautiful musical instrument playing. So uh, I don't know just how that would come out. Now, I also considered a pogo stick that has a built-in pedometer and a flashing red light in the back of it and a strobe headlight in the front of it because there's no need and you know, that would really sound like a good feature to put on a pogo stick and it also would make use of the energy generated when the pogo stick bounces. You could have a, uh, some kind of a little generator in there or alternator. I guess an alternator would work, except you'd probably be having irregular cycles or hertz, as they call it these days, that would go by how fast you're bouncing on it. And I guess that the higher you bounce, the longer the cycle would have to be because it's, you've got to come back down before you can hit the other side of your sine wave. Then I got to thinking about what if it were a commercial stilt that had an automatic uh, height adjustment on them, you know, and uh, they might even, you could put a backup horn up on them so if you started to back up, and you could even put an altimeter on, especially if that judged your distance from the floor, your height from the floor rather than above sea level. Now, some of these multi-bladed jackknifes have blades on them that'll do all kinds of things that uh, you probably never have used. I'm sure all of you have one of these jackknifes, but uh, uh, how many times have you used some of those accessories that are in those? Then, also one of the most curious things that I've ever owned is a serenade and shoe horn, where that every time you start to put on your shoes, as you slide your heel down into the shoe, well, the, the shoe horn serenades you. You know, and that makes you feel really important and everything, but I'm not really sure if it helps you achieve the objective of getting your shoe put on, so I'll throw that out for consideration. And then you, if you have a key ring that yells, here I am, when you say, where are my keys? But, hmm, you know, actually I'd pay extra for that. Now, if you have a mixing spoon that has an automatic whiffle action, you know, I don't know how that would do. It would might save you a little energy from beating your eggs with your hand or stirring the shortening down into your pie crust. But uh, I really don't know if uh, you'd consider that to be an advantage worth the extra price or not. And then uh, these motion activated paper towel dispensers, when you reach up to get it to pull it off, it automatically sends you out an extra long piece of the towel. But by the same token, it would be about as easy to reach out and grab it and pull it down and rip it off. So I don't know whether that, that deluxe feature would make it worthwhile or not. But finally, and the most important of all, a voice recognition program that writes the Lord's Prayer when you're trying instead to write a children's book about Peter Rabbit and the Three Bears. Because that's how I've got the most advanced voice recognition system that's supposed to be in the market. If anyone knows of one that works really well, I wish they'd tell me. Because I can be talking about the cowboy rode over the hill in a full gallop, and it will tell me the ship was going down by the stern as it prints it out. So I really don't know about that one. And when I really get to thinking about it, I just have a feeling I really didn't even come close on the, the proper answer to it. Well, anyway, I hope that you all can join me in this discourse. I'm glad you dropped by. If you have any good ideas, please let me know. Because right now, I've got to just say goodbye.